they didn't stay there a few years ago. Um, I don't know what kind of morning you've had or what things have gone through your head this morning. So uh, I know it's going to sound funny, but uh, I need to shake some things off of me right now before before the word comes pulled forth, before God can enter in my heart, there's some things that may block it, whether it be frustrations or anger or issues, or just life. So just shake it off real quick. Just shake it off. Okay? Amen. Shake it, Caleb. No? Praise the Lord. All right, so this morning, um, I'm going to preach a very, very important, not that any other uh, message isn't important, but I think that this uh, this subject specifically is not um, maybe focused on very often in the church and it's maybe uh, minimized and I, I believe that, that God wants uh, us to focus on that this morning and keep our mind on that through the day and through the week, okay? So uh, if you'll go with me in the words, Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5. have it say amen. Okay. Acts chapter 5 verse 12 says, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Again. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one, one accord in Solomon's porch. Verse 14, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on the beds and couches that at, the, at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. Verse 16, there came also a multitude out of the cities round about into Jerusalem, bringing sick folk. And them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. And we're going to continue through verse 20. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which were the sect of the Sadducees, and, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them into a common prison. But by the angel, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand, speak in the temple to the people and all the words to the people all the words of this life. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. We ask you to open up our hearts this morning. Prepare our minds and our hearts, our ears to receive your word. Help us, Lord Jesus, to focus upon you and to apply the word to our lives. Lord, we ask you, Lord Jesus, for your anointing, Lord God, to preach and to teach this word this morning. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just have your way in this place. So we pray for all those that weren't able to make it this morning, Lord Jesus, those that are out of town. We pray for our brothers and sisters, Lord God, that you would just be with them wherever they're at, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, I want to speak on a specific subject, the shadow that you cast. In this scripture... This was just after the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell and, and, and God had told the apostles to tarry in Jerusalem till they were endued with power from on high. And so they did that. They tarried in Jerusalem and then they got hit with the Holy Ghost and were anointed. And then you see in verse 14, uh, actually starting at verse 12, where it says many signs and wonder or rock among the people by the apostles because they were anointed by God. And they were endued with power from on high. Many signs, many wonders were done in verse 12. But I want you to notice something that not only were signs, uh, part of the signs and wonders were being healed and being delivered so much so, and they believed, the people believed it so much that it wasn't just touching, 
They didn't go and say, pray for me. They didn't say, come lay hands on me. They didn't say, come preach to me. They said, if, that, if I could just at least get in his shadow, just his overshadowing, I might be healed and I might be delivered. And as you read the scripture, it says that there came, verse 60, there came a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. They had demons. And then the, the next portion says, and they were healed every one. Every one. Including those that were in the shadow of Peter. And so these people were laying themselves and trying to get themselves in a position. Trying to position themselves to a place where they, they could get healed. Where they, where they could get in Peter's presence. Where they could get delivered. Or they were bringing their friends and their family members that, that needed healing. Or those that were filled with demons and filled with spirits. Vexing spirits, the scripture says. Bringing all these people and, and trying to put them in a position that the, the shadow of Peter might overshadow them. Might fall over them. And then they get healed. They were trying to get in his presence. They didn't say once again to touch him. They didn't say, well, I'm going to try to touch him. They didn't say, I'm going to try to talk, talk to him or, or, or um, get him to uh, anoint my head. They didn't say any of that. They said, I just need to get in the shadow. That's how much influence and how much power and anointing that they were walking in in that day. And we just, just finished passing Father's Day and and I was uh, wanting to speak with fathers this morning, but this actually applies to absolutely everyone. Now, fathers have a huge influence on the home. And fathers have an influence to people. But it's not only them. Amen? This message, the shadow that you cast, that's today's message. The title of this message is the shadow that you cast. So, I want to ask you this morning a simple question. What shadow are you casting? What is the shadow that you cast this morning? Today we're going to focus on this scripture. And this, this shadow that you cast, when I'm talking about that, it's not just a literal shadow that you're standing in light and somebody's underneath you and they're waiting to be under your shadow. I'm talking specifically about influence. How are you influencing people? And a lot of people say, well, I'm insignificant. I don't know anybody. I really am not around anyone. And I don't influence anyone. You influence more than you know. See, people think, well, in order for me to have influence, I have to have authority. In order for me to have influence, I have to be looked up by at somebody. And that's not a reality. Anybody and everyone can have influence on someone else. You can have influence on strangers. You can have influence on a passerby. You can have influence in your home. You can have influence on Facebook. You can have influence anywhere and everywhere. So don't sell yourself short. You know, talking about influence and talking about fathers, well, let's talk about my dad for a second. My dad influenced my life a lot. You could say, my father cast a large shadow over my life. And when I say shadow, I don't mean that in a negative way. He just influenced me a lot. I got into boxing, I think, probably to impress my dad. And you want to talk about influences. Me and David would go to Mexico and we would fight an entire city because we want to impress dad. We were influenced by dad. I remember the last fight that I was at, Mark was at that fight. I was not there to fight, I was there to coach. And my dad comes up and says, hey, I found you a fight. I'm like, I'm not fighting dad. And he was like, I said, I came here to coach David. And he used some choice words. I'm not going to repeat those words, but he used some choice words to influence me and to challenge me to get into the fight. And the guy that Margaret contested, the guy that I fought, he looked kind of like Rocky in the Russian. You know, he's a big old guy. So it's not something that I really wanted to do. I hadn't worked out in six months. But the influence of my dad, what he, what he pressed on me, what he, what he pressured on me, influenced me to make a certain decision and to fight that night. I, I was influenced by my dad. I was influenced by my big brother. I was influenced 
by people, I'm influenced by my wife, by my kids, by people around me, by bosses that I've had. I've been influenced by so many people. Let me ask you, how many people have you had influence on in your life that you can think about? I know that it may sound like a simple message and a simple subject this morning, but if you don't realize how powerful influences are in your life, then you can use just, just your demeanor, your attitude, your spirit, and you can ruin somebody because of your influence. You don't know when somebody's watching you. The power of influence is, is, is what I'm talking about this morning. This greatly affects our lives. Both positively and negatively, power of influence affects our lives. And the shadow that you cast will greatly affect somebody else. The shadow that you cast will greatly affect somebody else. Now, for example, let's go all the way to the beginning of the Bible. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were the first man and woman. And because of Eve saying, see, Adam knew what God said. Eve knew what God said. But they were influenced. Eve was influenced by a snake. Well, did God say this? It was a question. And then all of a sudden, Eve went to Adam and said, hey, look, look at this fruit. We should eat it. And now maybe it was because she was naked. I don't know. He influenced her. But a woman's influence is powerful. And sometimes maybe, maybe not even recognized by themselves. A woman's influence. So let's talk about what influence a, a lady has. Period. So a woman has influence on her husband. A woman has influence on her children. A woman has influence in the home and the atmosphere of that home. How about a woman has influence on attitude? I can be changed. My attitude can change in an instant. If my, my wife's in, influence me, whether good or bad, she can make me smile. She can make me frown or scowl in an instant because she has influence. You have influence on others. You have influence on people's feelings. You have influence, influence by your displeasure. If you're not happy, you have influence on other people because you're not happy if you have displeasure. Ladies, you have more influence than you realize. So I'm going to ask you this morning again, what kind of shadow are you casting? What is the shadow that you cast every morning? These people were trying to get in a position to get under the shadow of Peter because under his shadow, there was power. Under his shadow, there was healing. Under the shadow, let's just go beyond that. He had the anointing of God. And in, in God, there's power, there's anointing, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's, there's provision, there's joy, there's peace. What kind of, of provision do you have under your shadow? And sometimes we don't think about it. Oh, it's just me and it's just in my house and I can act the way I want to. But the reality of it is, is the shadow that you cast affects everyone. And if you're not mindful of that, if you're not every single day, every single word that you say, every single attitude and spirit that you come across, if you don't do that, what ends up happening is you cast a shadow, a negative shadow, a shadow that can hurt someone. A shadow that's not positive. A shadow that's not Christ-like. It's a shadow that does not reflect God. What, else, what other examples of, their, uh, of influence are there? Well, when Israel was wandering through the desert and they were promised a promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, they found it. And they sent 12 spies into the land to find that. To go spy, go see what we got over there. And they came back and they said that, that two, it took two men to carry a bushel of grapes. That's how large those grapes were. So that was a blessed land. But ten people came back and said, there are giants in the land and, and we're, we're grasshoppers in our, in our eyes. And then only two people said, we were well able. But the influence of ten people caused an entire nation to miss out on the promised land for 40 years. The influence of 10 people. Can, so can you imagine, let's just for a second think of the United States and you get a group of people that can influence the entire United States in a specific way and miss out on your blessing, 
and miss out on favor and miss out on a promise that God gave because of a few people and their negative influence. There was two guys that under, unfortunately could not overpower those ten people. But there was two guys, Joshua and Caleb, they brought back a good report. Amen? They were sent to the promised land. They were sent to scout and bring a report back. There was a good report and there was a bad report. Israel missed out on the promised land for 40 years. They missed out and wandered in the wilderness because they were influenced by 10 people. That is a power of influence. That is a power of the shadow that you cast on somebody else's life. How about King Saul? You remember the story about, uh, about David and Goliath? The story about David and Goliath says that, that when David went to go deliver bread and cheese to his brothers, that he found the entire camp of Israel shaking in their boots, so to speak, in their tents, hiding from one man. An entire army hiding from one man, including King Saul. And King Saul, it said in the scriptures that he was head and shoulders above the rest. He was a big man. And he, even him, the king, who was bigger than everyone else, that probably at least he should have had courage to stand against this giant. Even him, he was scared. He was in his tent. So this is a man of authority over a nation. And he's hiding in his tent. And every soldier in there is hiding in their tent. And they're peeking out the little tent. And they're looking, they're looking at that giant. And the giant is taunting them and mocking them. And Goliath is just calling them out, calling them out, calling them out. And nobody moves. And this little boy comes with bread and cheese for his brothers. And he looks around and says, what is everybody hiding from? Well, there's a giant over there. And whoever defeats that giant, the king's going to bless them. And he said, well, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He can't believe that question is to the, to the people right here. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Why are you hiding? Well, they were influencing one another. This you got one person scared, and then another person got scared, and then the king was scared. And look at that giant. You can just hear. Have you ever gotten involved in a group conversation? And, well, what do you think? I don't know. And, ooh, and everybody gets scared, or everybody gets angry, or everybody gets messed up. What was that? Mob mentality, absolutely. All of a sudden, every, mob mentality. Everybody's yelling, and so somebody else starts yelling. All for nothing. But here's the reality of it, is that mob mentality will catch on, whether it be sometimes positive, a lot of times negative. But the reality of it is, is David, one little boy of an entire nation, walked up to an entire army facing one man on the other side. And every single one of them were influenced by each other, including King Saul. King Saul should have been leading them and said, what David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? It doesn't matter how big he is. God will bring him down. But it took a little boy with the faith of a child. And he walked up and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he would defy the armies of the Lord God. And what did David do? It says that David went over there and he challenged him. Not with a sword, not with Saul's armor. He challenged him with a slingshot. Some little boy's toy. Now, don't get me wrong. He was a pro. And he was always defending his sheep. He was a shepherd boy. And, and, and he says, well, if, if God delivered a bear into my hands, maybe with this little shot, and, and God delivered the lion into my hands that attacked my sheep, and he'll deliver this giant into my hands. And it, the, the Bible says that David went over there, make a long story short, he went over there, sunk a rock into the giant's head, walked over there, took the sword away from him, took his own sword away, and cut off his head with it. Now here's what happened next. Talk about influence. The Bible also says, and what that, we usually stop at that scripture, ooh, yeah, we're so great. Well, here's what happens next. As the armies of Israel see that, and in the scripture it says that they stood up Shouted and pursued after the enemy off of the influence of one boy. So even, even teenagers and kids today, they'll be like, I don't have any influence. I'm just a kid. I'm just a teenager. You have more influence than you know. Just David, as a little boy, 
as a little teenager, went over and influenced an entire army. One, to stop hiding, to stand up, to shout a war cry, and then to pursue after the enemy. Amen? If you, in case you want to see where that's at, that's in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 51 and 52, where the scripture says that they stood up, they shouted, and pursued after the enemy. They got courage from a kid. The power of influence. The power of influence from King Saul was to shake in their boots and their tent. The power of influence from a kid after he defied what seemed to be an impossible obstacle was to face it head on because God was going to conquer it for him. Not in and of his strength, his own strength. What kind of shadow do you cast this morning? Are you King Saul? Or are you King David? And David was anointed to be king, but he wasn't king yet. What kind of shadow do you cast? How about the woman at the well? This is a lady that shouldn't be influencing anybody, right? Ooh, she's been with five husbands, and he's, she's, on a, she's shacked up with number six, and nobody even likes her. And she's a Samaritan woman, so nobody listens to women, and nobody listens to Samaritans in that day. But she walks up to Jesus and she talks to Jesus for a little bit. And then she goes, the, impact, the influence of a woman, let's talk about a woman's influence or just somebody that has a desire to tell the world how they're a testimony. Do not underplay your testimony. Because this lady went and gave a testimony to the city and it said the entire city came out to see Jesus. This woman at the well, this woman of Samaria, an entire city came out to see Jesus because of one woman's words. The power of influence. She was a Samaritan, married five times, shacked up with another. But the scripture says she influenced an entire city. You can influence an entire city. Sister, you can influence an entire city. Brother, you can influence an entire city. We can influence an entire city. Just one person. But the enemy will cause you to say, I'm, I'm nobody. This little old church can't, can't influence anyone. But here's the reality. It's just we can. What kind of shadow do you cast this morning? What is the shadow? Are you casting a shadow like Peter? Something full of anointing? Something full of power? Something full of healing and deliverance? Or are you casting a shadow that's negative? That's bitter? That's full of strife? That's full of gossip and anger and issues. Do people like hanging around with you because you're a positive influence and you encourage them? Or do people kind of run from you when you walk in your presence because all you do is complain and all you do is, 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 is murmur about the situation that you're in? <clears throat> what kind of shadow are you casting this morning? Proverbs 11, 11, go there. Please go there. Proverbs 11, 11. Proverbs 11, 11 says, if you haven't said amen. You all whispering? Amen. Okay, let's practice this one more time. Everybody say Amen. And everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. There you go. I know you ought to get louder than that. Praise God. 1111 says, by blessing the upright, I'm sorry, by the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. That is absolutely talking about the shadow that you cast. That is absolutely talking about the influence that you have by the blessing of the upright, the city, the entire city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Praise the Lord. The book of wisdom. See, you can build up an entire city. You can build up at a, a home. You can build up a person. You can build up an attitude. You can build up a life. Or, if you want to cast a different shadow, you can tear down a city. You can tear down 
a home. You can tear down a person. You can tear down an attitude. You can tear down a life simply by your influence. That's scripture. I want to read that scripture again in the, in the context of your influence. I want you to think of your city, your home, a person, attitude, life in general. But the Bible says that by the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. It's your influence. What kind of shadow do you cast this morning? What is your influence? I heard it said a long time ago by my pastor before. And he said, you can choose to be either a thermometer or a thermostat in life. And that, that thermometer will reflect its surroundings. It's, it's, it's effective. Heat will rise, so it, 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 it rises. A thermometer reflects its surroundings. A thermostat, a, sorry, a thermometer reflects its surrounding, surroundings, and a thermostat affects its surroundings. You can choose to be just a reflection of your surroundings, or you can choose to be something that affects, something that influences its surroundings. A thermometer or, or a thermostat. Now you might be saying, well, I, I don't feel like I have any power. The apostle, like the apostle Peter, uh, he, he had power and, and people were getting in his shadow. I don't feel like I have any power. I don't feel like I have that kind of anointing. Let me tell you this. Let's, let's, just, let's just kind of put it on the line here. You don't have to have that kind of power to have influence. You don't have to be causing miracles every day and delivering people from spirits and healing the sick that they're recovering. You don't have to do that every single day like Peter was in this specific time to have influence. But just so you can set the record straight, if you've been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the power to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You have the power to cast out demons. You have the power and authority that God has given you to walk in that kind of anointing. But even if you're not walking in that anointing right now, you do have a power of influence. You do cast a shadow every single day of your life. All in the name of Jesus Christ, you can do this. You can't do it in and of yourself. But whether you have Jesus or not, you can influence somebody. Be mindful of the shadow that you cast. Even if you're not doing miracles, your words can influence somebody. Your actions can influence someone. Your attitude can influence someone. Your demeanor, just your demeanor, just the way you act. Just the way you present yourself can, can affect someone. Your distance, if you're an introvert or an extrovert, and you've labeled yourself a specific type of person, that might be a complete turnoff for a soul or ear. You have to step out of our, your comfort zone. Sometimes you're going to have to get uncomfortable to reach out, to influence somebody. You might have to step out of what you normally do, what you normally want to do, how you normally act, how you normally talk. You might have to step out of you in order to be effective somewhere, even though it's not comfortable. Your words, actions, attitude, demeanor, distance, everything, it affects. It's an influence on somebody else. How many know we're here to be a witness? Amen. We are to be a witness. What is a witness? A witness, now let's put it in the, in the context of, of today. A witness in a courtroom is a person that's given a testimony to influence a group of people. That is a witness. We are to be witnesses. And to be a witness, we are supposed to influence we're supposed to cast a shadow. So if you're in a courtroom this morning and you have a jury of your peers, a witness is going to give a testimony that's supposed to influence their decision. Let me ask you this. Your witness today, the influence that you have, the shadow that you cast, your witness, how does it influence the group, the jury that's around you, judging your life? 
How's it influenced? Are you influencing anyone for Christ? See, a lot of times in, in, in life, and unfortunately, we focus on us. It's a selfish world. It's all about me. And so every single day you wake up and what can I do for me? What can I help for me? For me and mine? And we very rarely, maybe, maybe not all of us, if, if you've arrived, praise God, I'm glad you have. But maybe not all of us, but, but do you, are you mindful every single day of how you influence somebody? When you wake up and you've had a bad day or you've had a bad morning, are you mindful of the way you've affected somebody, the way you spoke to them, the way you've reacted to them? Are you mindful of that? Are you truly being a real witness this morning? Verse 14 in Acts chapter 5. Go back to Acts chapter 5. Verse 14, I want you to notice something. It's talking about miracles and people getting in the shadow of Peter. So people were going to get healed. and People were going to get delivered. But I want you to see what the outcome of those miracles were. Verse 14 says, And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both men and women. So the result of people getting in, Pe in Peter's shadow or trying to get in people's, Peter's presence or his shadow or his influence was people added unto the kingdom of God. It was more than just miracles. It was more than just deliverance from spirits. It was salvation. It was people being added to the kingdom. Believers were added. More believers were added. More believers were added. Why? Because the influence of Peter. Because the shadow that he was casting. He was casting a shadow of an anointing from Jesus Christ upon all these people. And they became believers in Jesus because of what he did. And what he was saying. And the way he was acting. And the way he was influencing people. If we don't influence people for the kingdom of God, then we're influencing for another kingdom. And we do that every single day. Every single word is an influence. Every single attitude, every single action is an influence. The Bible says, believe this, we're added unto the Lord. A multitude, both men and women. Our witness is an influence. you got to tell somebody about God. You got to tell somebody or invite them to church or tell somebody to tune in to Facebook Live or tell somebody, you may not have, like Moses said, I, I, there's something wrong with my tongue, I can't really speak. And you're sending me to go talk to Pharaoh and deliver this nation out of Egypt. You may not be the most gifted speaker. You may not be the, the most gifted uh, orator and, or, or, or know the most about the scriptures. But what do you know? And are you taking what you know about God? And are you taking it to somebody to influence them and to cast a shadow over their life that will add to their soul, that will add to their spirit, that will add to their salvation, that will cause them to believe? What is your testimony this morning? How many people, we're halfway through the year, how many people have heard your testimony this year of what God has done in your life and what God's currently doing? God's done a lot of things for me and a lot of miracles. And I can give them that testimony. I can give them the testimony when I got saved or when I first got saved or when I got saved later or, or when God was saving me later through this situation that situation. Every time you open your mouth and glorify God with a testimony, it's a power, it's an influence, it's a shadow that you cast. But it's up to you to open your mouth. You gotta tell someone. We're witnesses. And a, and a silent witness doesn't do anything. A witness that goes up there and says, I plead the fifth and don't say anything doesn't help anybody. And too, too many Christians out there are just being silent. I plead the fifth witnesses because all they're worried about is I'm trying to stay saved and I want to be saved. And it's all about me and I'm just coming to church just trying to make it. And they don't want to tell anybody. Maybe the enemies filled them with condemnation because they failed or they've fallen short. Everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. But the power of the word, the power of the church, we overcome the enemy and how? By the blood of the lamb and by, by the word of our testimony. Amen. It's your testimony. It's your shadow. It's your influence. 
We have called, you are being called to be a witness. But you know what? You can be a negative witness as well. Let me tell you a story about John the Baptist. Powerful man of God. Prepared the way of, of Jesus to come. That is our calling to prepare the way. We are supposed to be called, just like John the Baptist, to prepare the way of Jesus to come back. This man went and he was telling people what it was. You're in sin. That's probably not popular today to tell us, oh, you're in sin. Oh, you're judging me. Guess what? I'm more worried about your salvation. I want you to make it to heaven. I want you to be saved. And John the Baptist was telling the king and his wife that they were in sin. Anyway, these people got bitter. And specifically this one woman. And this woman's daughter was dancing before the king. And the king was so inspired that he said, I'll give you up to half of the kingdom. Ask me whatever you want. I'll give you up to half of the kingdom. And this girl went to her influencer, went to her mom, and said, what should I ask for? He offered me up to half the kingdom. I don't know about you guys, and I don't know, maybe she was just super rich or whatever, didn't need money. But somebody offers you half the kingdom, I'd say take it, right? But instead of asking for half the kingdom, which I'm sure she had different things in mind. Ooh, I could ask for this, I could ask for that. Ask for a new chariot or a new donkey, whatever they had, it was popular back then. You know, a new ride, give me a new ride. Give me a new donkey or whatever, horse, chariot. Give me some clothes, some gold, something. He said, up to half the kingdom. This is the king talking. All of a sudden, he, she goes to somebody and says, hey, what should I ask for? And that person influences her, ask for the head of John the Baptist. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody said, you can either get half the kingdom or a head. Half the kingdom or a head. Then, okay, so what are you going to do? Quest wisdom. Ding. Light bulb. What am I going to do with this head afterwards? Can I sell it? No. Can I post it up on the wall? No. It's going to stink after a while. All. This girl was influenced and gave up half the kingdom for a head based on somebody that was influencing her on their issue, on their offense, on their bitterness. Because of their strife, they influenced another person. Okay? Now, I know that everyone in here is saved and nobody gossips and things like that. But guess what? You can influence somebody to the negative because of your issue, because of your problem. Now they may agree with you, may, they may have had a similar problem, but the reality of it is, is you can affect somebody by you and not them not letting them get half the kingdom. Now let's put it in the context of God for a second. God is offering the kingdom of God. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And you can, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And you can take a person outside of that gift of righteousness and peace in the Holy Ghost. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You can take somebody out of that because of your influence based on your issue, on your bitterness, on your offense. There's too many people doing that. I don't like that person, so let me come over here. You know that, you know I don't like that person because that person did this to me. Ooh, I don't like them either. Why? Because you said my mentality again. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Be careful who you're around. Be careful who you let overshadow you. Be careful who you let speak into your life. Is it coming? Is it scripture? Is it scripturally based? Is the principles and what they believe? Is it or it, and do you know it's gossip? Do don't listen to it. Cut them off. This girl gave up half the kingdom for a head. It makes no sense to me. But that's what she asked for. And a man of God died because of that. Influence from somebody else. Be careful who you're around. Be careful who you let, let influence you. Be careful of the shadow that you cast upon somebody else or the shadow that you're allowing to be cast on you. 
Because guess what? You could be doing well in God and you could be strong in Christ. And then you would get around that one brother or that one sister or that one friend or that one family member. And they influence you to be what you used to be. And how you used to act. And you start acting a little bit different. Instead of giving your testimony to influence them for change, they change you. Because of the way they act. Whether you want to impress them or whatever, you just act a certain way around people. Be careful who you're around. I'm not saying not to go in the midst of people that need God. If you're the one being the influencer, go in there and cast a shadow. Cast a shadow over these people. Cast an influence, a wide net that you can influence people for God. But if they're influencing you, you need to step out of that situation and out of their shadow. Amen? Amen. If you want to be a better prayer warrior, be around people that pray. You want to be a better witness and learn how to witness? Go around people that like to win souls and to go out there in the streets and to talk to people that ain't afraid of it. You want to learn how to praise and worship, then be around a praiser and a worshiper. I thank God for my wife. Because whether there's three people in here or 30 people in here, she's still worshiping. And people don't start clapping until she does. I thank God for that. Here's what you don't know about her. She's an introvert. She doesn't like to be outspoken. She doesn't like to be um, seen. But she does it. Why? Because she knows her influence. She knows the power of influence. Sometimes we get forget the power of influence outside of church, though. We have the power of influence and the power to overshadow somebody. Somebody told me a long time ago, today, you're going to affect somebody to the positive or to the negative. That result is going to depend on you. If you want to increase, go around those people and be around those people that will increase you. That will give you more of the word. That will give you more of God. That will encourage you. That will lift you up. Now, I'm not saying, because I might tell you you're doing wrong, that doesn't mean I'm not positively influencing you. That means I'm holding you accountable to what's right and wrong. Just because it ain't done with a super happy smile and a hug, I may hug you afterwards. But I'm going to tell you truth. I'm going to tell you what's right. So I can inspire change and encourage you to change. Because you're going to influence somebody. And I want to influence you for the better. I want every single one of us to make it to heaven. I want every single one of us to get there. I want every single one of us that when they see us, they see God. Not see me. I don't want people to see me. I want them to see God. But I can cast a weird shadow. See, the Bible talks about shadows. It talks about walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You're going to walk through shadows all the time. And you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But if you trust in God and your focus is on Him, then that shadow that's cast upon you, no matter what position or whose presence you're in, you're not going to be affected by that because you're in Him. You're under the shadow of His wings, as the Scripture says. I want to encourage everyone this morning to cast a shadow that reflects Jesus. I wish I had the ability computer-wise to do this, but I so wanted to have someone standing there and the shadow behind them that was cast to be a reflection of Christ. Because that's what we're called to do. By our witness, by our words, by our action, by our testimony, we are called to reflect God. We are called to cast a shadow that is an anointed shadow, that is a powerful shadow that comes from God to affect people to be healed, that people will get healed when they're in our presence. Why? Not because of us, but because we have an anointing that Jesus put upon us. Like Peter, people got in the shadow to get healed. Like Peter, people got in the shadow to get delivered from spirits. And like Peter, you should be cast in the shadow. And people should long to be in your presence because it's a positive place to be. They get peace, they get joy, they get delivered, they get encouraged, they get a word of God. We're called to be witnesses. Not only to be witness to and to be ministered to, but we're also called to be ministers and to spread the gospel. The Great Commission, 
is go ye therefore and teach all nations, making disciples, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In the name of it, we are called to be a witness. We are called to testify. We are called to influence others. So I got a question for you again. I'm going to repeat it. What is the shadow that you cast this morning? What shadow are you casting over somebody else's life? It's a choice that you got to make this morning. You can walk out of here and continue walking the way you walk, talk the way you talk, act the way you act, and change nothing. Or you can choose to reflect God and to give somebody a testimony and invite somebody to church and invite somebody to a Bible study and invite somebody to hear the Word of God and to hear your testimony. I want to encourage every single one of you that by next Sunday, you give somebody your testimony, you invite them to church, you invite them to a Bible study. Reflect God. Cast a shadow over them that's going to positively affect them. Okay? That's it for this morning. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening, for worshiping. That's it. God bless you. Have a good day. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.